Okay. <clears throat> good morning, good afternoon, everyone, and thanks for joining today's seminar on advanced components for laser solutions in manufacturing, medical, and defense. Uh, I'm uh, Tim McComb, uh, Global Manager for Business Development at Coherent uh, for Components. Uh, before we start, uh, there's a Q&A uh, bubble either at the top or the bottom of your screen. Uh, feel free at any time during the presentation to throw your questions in there and, uh, and we'll get them answered uh, at the end. Uh, we'll go through all of them and, and uh, work through that. So without further ado, uh, let's get going. So uh, a brief overview about, uh, about Coherent. Um, you probably know uh, who Coherent is or you, you've heard of us, but uh, just a little bit of fun background facts. We were founded in 1966 uh, in a laundry room in Palo Alto, California. Uh, the reason we were founded in a laundry room is because that was the only place you could get the 230 volts to run the, the, the first prototype laser that they were building at the time, uh, affectionately known as the Kluge. Uh, it was a CO2 laser that eventually ended up in the product over here. You can see the, uh, the early product team for that system. Uh, and our first customer was Boeing Labs. Uh, we cover a wide range of different markets at Coherent, uh, focusing on aerospace and defense, microelectronics, bio, bio instrumentation and life science, as well as uh, precision manufacturing applications. Uh, a, before we get into talking about the, the details of components, I want to give you a, a bit of an insight about, uh, about supply chain. So we're focusing on components here today uh, as, as something Coherent can provide to you, but something to keep in mind is that Coherent can work with you throughout your entire supply chain. So perhaps you have a program that you're developing where you need a specific component, but it's early on in your development phase. And so you might want to work with Coherent to make uh, some kind of sub-assembly for you that long-term you're going to manufacture, but you need prototypes uh, early on. That's something we can work with you on. Perhaps you need to have a, a mix of different components uh, or, or you end up wanting to just build it into an entire uh, laser that we can supply. We can really work with you uh, across the board. So now let's talk a bit about coherence component capabilities. Uh, first I'll go through the different uh, sites and, and the business units that we have and then we'll talk a bit about applications of these uh, specialty components. Uh, first off is our uh, specialty optics group. Uh, this is uh, based up in Richmond, California, and their, their uh, main capability is, is large format uh, mirrors and lenses. Uh, in, in this case, we're talking about optics that are up to uh, and even greater than meter class uh, in, in form factor. And these are free form optics that can be made in pretty much any optical material that you care to, to use. Uh, specialties include silicon carbide, beryllium, zerodor, fused silica, but basically, you name it, we can probably make an optic for you out of it if, uh, if, if needed. Uh, it, we can do uh, space qualified optics at this facility and also military grade lightweight assemblies. But we also have some commercial applications uh, for, for a number of different line beam applic uh, applications at this facility. Just kind of give you a sense of scale. You can see some of the large format uh, process tooling here in the, in the picture of the facility off to the, off to the right. Uh, a second capability is our uh, what we call our advanced crystal growth group uh, based over in New Jersey. Uh, there we have a, a wide range of crystal growth capabilities spanning nonlinear crystals, active crystals, electro optic crystals, and also uh, a large capability in processing sapphire windows. Overall, we grow more than 15 crystals uh, with that portfolio growing every year. Uh, and those crystals uh, for the active crystals have at least four different dopant options that we can work with. Another thing important to note, especially for our customers uh, in the US defense market, a lot of times uh, some of the crystals we grow are the only domestic option uh, for, for that type of crystal. And that's very important when you need to control the supply chain and you really wanna have a US domestic supply chain uh, for, certain, uh, for certain laser crystals that are used in, in systems. In addition to the crystals and in complement to that, we also have a, a high performance coding capability there because a lot of times, uh, the enablement of, of crystals is really driven by the capability of your coatings, whether they can handle either the high temperature ranges or uh, have very low reflectivities that are needed to make uh, really good nonlinear uh, conversion efficiencies. 
And in addition to the coatings and the crystals, uh, we can also build them into uh, fully fledged sub assemblies. So that might involve soldering active crystals into heat sinks. It might involve putting nonlinear crystals into ovens or uh, including electrodes on electro optic crystal assemblies. And so you don't just have to come to us for crystals. We can also work with you to make customized sub assemblies that can uh, be a component in your laser system. In addition to the coding capabilities at the crystal facility, we also have a large format uh, and uh, larger capability for coatings uh, at, an, at our facility in, in Richmond, California, where we can do both high performance HR, AR, and polarizing coatings on very large class optics up to meter size. You can see kind of the scale of the coating chamber for some of those meter size optics over here. In addition to that, we can also do stress analysis on the, on the optics uh, ahead of coating, so we can do pre-polished compensation uh, for coatings that are very thick or advanced multi-layer designs. And that's one of the benefits of having your specialty optics fabrication at the same facility or, or in close collaboration uh, with the uh, coating, uh, coating chamber capability. Over here, you can see one of our uh, recent uh, coatings of the optics that go on the James Webb Space Telescope. Sorry, there we go. In addition, uh, in addition to the uh, capabilities for, uh, for, for optics, we also have a, a wide range of semiconductor laser manufacturing capability. <clears throat> Uh, in this case, we have uh, a full semiconductor uh, foundry that has capabilities to manufacture uh, epi, epi all the way from 630 nanometers out to two microns. We can make uh, bare die bars, chips, uh, single lighters at watt level all the way out to kilowatt level. And we can uh, work with you to provide you just bare chips. We can put those chips on sub mounts. We can uh, package them into bars or stacks. And we can even fiber couple those stacks or individual single emitters. And then those packages can be customized if you need to have a, a form factor that uh, suits a specific mechanical footprint or a specific interface. In addition to the uh, sort of standard broad stripe uh, capabilities for high power, we also have a, a novel technology known as tapered amplifiers, which are a, a ridge waveguide that starts out single mode and flares out into a broad stripe at the output end. And this reduces the uh, intensity on the facet and allows you to have single mode beam quality but multi-watt level output powers. In addition to the uh, main semiconductor capabilities, we can also do uh, wavelength stabilization uh, of all of these different uh, chips. And Coherent actually has an internal capability to manufacture our own volume Bragg gratings uh, at our facility in, uh, in Monrovia, where we uh, have a full uh, VBG fabrication capability. We can make them at a wide range of sizes, all the way up to sort of uh, uh, set, uh, inch sort of scale uh, form factor depending on the, the need that we need to uh, develop uh, to, to interface with these semiconductor devices. Uh, on to fibers, uh, we have a full fiber draw capability uh, from our Newfern facility in East Granby, Connecticut. And there we can make the usual collection of active and passive fibers as well as polarization maintaining fibers and even uh, fibers with the uh, custom dispersion profiles which are often used in both telecom applications and also certain uh, medical applications like optical coherence tomography. We also have a lot of capabilities in terms of spinning and doing microstructured fibers or extremely large core active fibers and uh, even uh, optimizing fibers for radiation resistance. Uh, we have a, a large portfolio, many thousands of, uh, of standard fiber designs that you can uh, pull from. But if those designs don't suit you, we can also do uh, work with you on either customizing or slightly tweaking designs to meet the exact needs of your application or if they need to be qualified for specific markets. We can then put those fibers into sub-assemblies, which might be fiber amplifier assemblies or gyro coils is another place where we can take fibers that we manufacture, put them into a specific coil and then imp implement them into higher level systems. And then finally, uh, while we talked mostly about all these fundamental components that you really think of as components in optics, Coherent also has a wide range of laser subsystems that you might consider a component in a higher level uh, optical system. For instance, kilowatt fiber lasers or amplifier modules that you can then assemble into uh, directed energy systems or communication systems uh, for space communications, as I'll get to in a moment. Uh, we have a wide range of power sensors that you might be familiar with from lab use, but those sensors can also be customized and made into OEM uh, arrangements to be used in uh, machine tools or medical devices. We also do structured light for machine vision, a wide range of CW nanosecond UV vis and IR lasers and things like bioinstrumentation. And of course, you have uh, lasers that can be built into materials processing systems or medical devices like CO2 lasers and ultra-fast systems. 
So now on to uh, some of the applications that we uh, apply these components to. Uh, I'm going to start out with space. It's one of my favorites to talk about. It's always really interesting to see the boundaries that you can push with components uh, when you have to go into the harsh environments of space. Uh, the first place I'll start out is our optics capability, uh, where we manufacture these large format optics. Uh, these, cap these optics, uh, ha we have over a hundred of them uh, in space, either on orbit or on the way to other planets, or even in the case of the Voyager spacecraft, uh, leaving the solar system. We've been doing space optics since uh, 1966 on, the, on this, one of the surveyor missions. And uh, now we've got uh, a number of uh, programs that are still uh, actively on orbit. I example here is the Spitzer Space Telescope primary. This is a mirror from one of the NASA GOES missions that's on Zero Door that's been lightweighted. <clears throat> and this is a, a one that's the telescope assembly uh, from the New Horizons uh, probe that went out to Pluto and is now on its way out of the solar system. Uh, fun fact is that both the New Horizons and the Voyager are some of the fastest moving optics ever manufactured. Voyager is moving at something like 32,000 kilometers an hour and New Horizons is going something like uh, 52,000 kilometers an hour. Uh, so uh, really, uh, really uh, out of the solar system type uh, optics there. Uh, we can also do these optics in silicon carbide, beryllium, uh, zero door, and uh, a number of other space-based materials. We have crystals on, uh, on the uh, NASA ISAT mission. This is a, a, an orbiter that's uh, measuring the thickness of the uh, ice sheets on the poles. Uh, it's got a neodymium vanadate laser as well as LBO uh, for frequency doubling to the green and an RP, RTP uh, modulator that's built into that system. On the, on the semiconductor laser front, we have a number of fiber coupled pumps uh, that are being qualified uh, for, for use in uh, space systems, particularly for pumping optical, optical communications lasers. And uh, very soon we expect uh, JPL to be launching the, the spacecraft with our lunar illuminator, a lun lunar illuminator on it, uh, which is a multicolor uh, diode stack. Uh, we've even put some gas lasers in space. Back in the early 2000s, we put a CO2 pumped terahertz gas laser into space on the NASA Aura spacecraft. Uh, we've got fibers on Mars, uh, on the Mars Curiosity rover. Uh, it's the passive fiber that delivers light into the spectrometer. We've also uh, been able to look into qualification efforts for, for qualifying fibers uh, for space use, whether that's managing the extreme temperature environments or the radiation exposure uh, that those fibers might undergo. And we've also put our fiber gyro coils uh, for navigation on commercial spacecraft. Moving on to another application space, uh, we have uh, defense and Coherent has been uh, very active in the defense space, both uh, here in the US and also uh, uh, globally in uh, providing components for a number of different kinds of defense systems. The ones we've been uh, most, uh, most active on uh, in terms of programs of record, we have somewhere between 10 and 15 active uh, programs of record on rangefinder, designator, LIDAR and IRCM type systems, infrared countermeasures. Uh, and in these kinds of systems, we typically provide either pump diodes uh, or uh, crystals, uh, laser crystals, active crystals and nonlinear crystals to either uh, generate uh, visible light or near IR light for these kinds of systems. In addition, in, in range finders and designators that can be uh, potentially handheld, we can even make extremely lightweight, all aluminum optics that are uh, precision polished uh, where you may want to have uh, really strong uh, CTE matching. And so you actually can use uh, glass-like finishes on aluminum on some of the optics in these, uh, these devices. Uh, another hot topic these days are, are laser dazzlers, where uh, you want to have uh, per, uh, less than lethal uh, protection of, uh, of, of either uh, personnel or of, uh, of uh, facilities from either drones or from other, uh, other people. And there you may use green lights to, to dazzle uh, or distract uh, sensors or, or, or uh, potential uh, assailants. One of the largest growing areas uh, that, uh, that we're very active in is directed energy. Uh, both from the laser perspective where we make uh, pump diodes, active fibers, and even full kilowatt class fiber amplifiers uh, for, the, for the main directed energy light source. But then in addition, we also can make optics uh, that are used <clears throat> in the beam directors for these 100 kilowatt, multi 100 kilowatt class systems, where you need to have extremely high reflectivity coatings that tend to be very thick. And that's where, uh, as I mentioned before, we can pre-design uh, the, the stress into the optic and pre-polish in the negative of that stress so that when the coating is applied, we can pull that stress back in uh, to get a perfectly formed optic. 
Uh, in addition, gyro coils might be used on these beam director kinds of systems to help uh, orient their positioning. Laser communications is another place that uh, is, is really growing in, in the defense space and even in the commercial space as well. Uh, and, and there we've, uh, we've got a number of different programs, erbium and terbium fibers and, and active pump diodes uh, to, to do the uh, EDFAs for those kinds of systems. But also uh, we have a program ongoing with NASA where we took one of our kilowatt uh, directed energy modules uh, for their deep space optical communication uh, mission as a translator. And then we also built the primary mirror uh, that's gonna be used to uh, beam that power out uh, out to a, a target. And the ultimate goal here is to put a, a system where we can do direct laser communication to a spacecraft that's out in the asteroid belt uh, so that we can uh, talk to it at the, at the speed of light. Uh, the other place where there's less light sources, but we, we still work in terms of uh, uh, passive components are in the sense of sensing and imaging uh, space where we have a wide range of optics and optical telescope assemblies that go into either space or on airborne systems. Uh, for for uh, either hyperspectral or conventional camera-based imaging systems. And then also we make a wide range of passive fibers that are used uh, in, uh, in, in sensing systems, for instance, for uh, perimeter security uh, or, uh, or temperature or vibration sensing, or even uh, stress sensing on aerospace platforms. And then finally, uh, as you might expect, uh, we're very active in navigation with our gyro coils, both on unmanned prep platforms, maritime platforms, and, uh, and missile systems. Uh, moving on to medical applications, here one of the, the largest spaces that Coherent uh, uh, plays is in the uh, uh, aesthetic uh, market uh, segment. And there you have uh, the, the very common and well-known uh, laser diode bars and stacks used in the hair removal space where you might uh, provide a, a multi-bar stack uh, at a wavelength range from 700 to 1000 nanometers to target different skin tones and hair colors. But you can also build those up into fiber coupled assemblies and you also may use sapphire windows that we manufacture as the uh, skin contact to do uh, a cooling of the, of the skin while you're having the treatment. Tattoo removal is another up and coming place. Uh, specifically, you're starting to see a lot of picosecond ND YAG uh, and other ND based systems where we might manufacture the crystals or the modulators uh, or even uh, LBO to transfer that to the green uh, for, for tattoo removal systems uh, to break up the pigments. And then uh, skin blemish and wrinkle reduction is, is another common place where uh, both CO2 lasers as well as tailored uh, semiconductor lasers at 1400 nanometers, 1700 nanometers, and even 1.9 to 2 microns are, are being uh, used to target different depths of the skin and different, uh, different uh, contents of the skin uh, to help smooth out wrinkles or reduce specific kinds of blemishes. In general surgery, uh, we provide a, a wide range of lasers at the 808, 900, 1 micron range to do uh, general cutting and cauterization uh, inside the body. But we also uh, manufacture uh, fiber assemblies. So this is a, a one-time use fiber that interfaces to a semiconductor laser that's then disposed of after the surgery, but it has to usually have some kind of special uh, termination on the end to direct the light or focus the light onto a specific uh, uh, part of the body. So for instance, here's an example of an angled uh, ball lens fiber tip where the angle provides a total internal reflection and the ball lens uh, focuses down the light uh, to up to a focal point just outside uh, to target the sidewall of, uh, of a vein, for instance, that you might be inside. One of the specific surgical places that uh, is really emerging uh, for, for laser applications is urology, where uh, you're starting to see a lot of uh, uh, two micron wavelength lasers used to both break up urological stones or to do treatment in, in various uh, uh, places uh, in, in, that, uh, in that part of the body. Uh, and this might be done by thulium fiber lasers pumped by 790 nanometer diodes, or it could be solid state holmium or uh, thulium doped crystals, which are then pumped by uh, uh, either in band at uh, two micron diode stacks or with, uh, again, the 790 nanometer diodes. In the, in the area of diagnostic imaging, uh, we again see fiber assemblies being something that's really interesting where we have uh, assemblies used, for instance, in uh, intrabody uh, optical coherence tomography where they have an int intrabody probe and they use uh, uh, OCT methods uh, to, to measure the thickness of veins or, or look at other, uh, other parts of the body. And, uh, and there again, you have one-time use fibers that have to also have very carefully managed dispersion properties. So you get uh, the, uh, the ideal uh, OCT images. 
Uh, laser dentistry is a place where you see uh, the, the, the growing use of lasers, both at the Erbium YAG 2.9 micron wavelength, uh, but also in the, in the uh, 808 to 1 micron uh, range. A really interesting one that's uh, starting to help look at different ways to treat cancer is, is photodynamic therapy. And this is a technique that uh, uses a, a specific drug that's injected into the body that activates only when exposed to a specific wavelength. Uh, and so there you can much more carefully target uh, areas uh, of, of the body uh, with, uh, with the treatment by injecting the drug locally and then using the light to very, very precisely activate it. And that can help uh, reduce the uh, side effects of, of uh, treatment of cancer, unlike uh, a full body chemotherapy type treatment. And then we're all fairly familiar with the ophthalmic uh, laser eye th surgery, where again, uh, our optics are, are often used as the, as the gain medium uh, in ultrafast uh, lasers, or uh, of course in uh, 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 gas lasers used to, to sculpt the eye uh, as well. So finally, moving on to uh, manufacturing applications, and this sort of implies both the, the manufacture of lasers themselves that are then used in commercial applications, but it might also be uh, semiconductors that are directly used in, in applications such as uh, 3D printing or surface treatment or uh, uh, heating or activation of, uh, of thin film coatings. Uh, we can make a wide range of different semiconductor lasers and different form factors or different beam deliveries in terms of homogenization or creating line beams uh, to directly do those kinds of applications. Uh, our large format optics are commonly used in display manufacture. So we create line beams with UV light to, to do uh, uh, different uh, processes in the manufacture of displays used in uh, uh, screens and cell phones. Uh, in addition, we can use uh, volume Bragg ratings to lock the wavelength uh, of those, uh, those types of uh, semiconductor devices to target surfaces. And also we have uh, VBGs that can be used in ultrafast lasers as uh, dispersion compensators, either stretchers or compressors uh, in, in ultrafast laser systems. Uh, you might be familiar with our uh, OptoScan uh, products, which are uh, both industrial process heads in coupling optics, as well as beam delivery fibers. Uh, that are used in a, a wide range of industrial high power kilowatt class laser systems. And then our active uh, nonlinear and electro-optic crystals are used in, again, a wide range of nanosecond, picosecond, and femtosecond laser systems. Uh, of particular note are the, the really large neodymium vanadate uh, booles that we can grow, which allows you to use 888 or 878.6 nanometer lower absorption but lower quantum defect pumps uh, to drive uh, picosecond lasers, which are used in a wide range of microelectronic uh, applications. And we can build those crystals into fully soldered uh, sub-assemblies, as well as LBO crystals into fully built ovens for nonlinear conversion. Uh, in addition, uh, we provide a wide range of different uh, uh, active uh, fibers uh, that can serve these kinds of, uh, of systems. And that brings me into a couple of uh, new products uh, that Coherent is, uh, is launching uh, specifically tailored to the to the laser builder space and uh, one of those uh, is a uh, fibers that are optimized for ultra fast uh, laser applications uh, specifically these are pm fibers that we've managed to modify the composition of such that we can enhance the emission and absorption cross-section without needing to dramatically induce uh, increase the doping and that lets us have uh, higher absorption on the order of 16 to 17 dB per meter in some of these fibers uh, without uh, impacting photodarkening negatively. In fact, we've dramatically improved the photodarkening while still improving the absorption. And that higher absorption lets you keep these fibers on the order of meter class lengths for your preamplifiers or power amplifiers in an ultra fast laser, avoiding a lot of the nonlinearities that would otherwise uh, uh, detriment the performance of your system. We're going to have a couple of seminars uh, upcoming on, on all these fibers and uh, diodes that I'm going to talk about. So uh, I won't go too much into the details, but uh, join us for those to get lots more details or, or uh, reach out to us separately. And we'd be happy to talk to you more about uh, what's up and coming with these fibers. Another fiber product uh, that uh, we're, we've launched uh, recently is our multi kilowatt uh, fibers uh, intended for the kilowatt class uh, materials processing uh, market. These are designed to be used in oscillators that can run at up to three kilowatts of power uh, in uh, near single mode beam quality. So we've also optimized these fibers uh, for the pump wavelength of your choice. So if you choose to run at 915 nanometers to have perhaps your uh, chiller system require less tolerance on the control of the temperature of the diodes and the wavelength of the diodes because the absorption is better uh, uh, overlapped, 
uh, you can of course use fibers there, but you can also use fibers pumped at 976 to reduce the, the thermal load uh, and to shorten the length of the fiber that you're using. And in both cases, you can reach well over three kilowatts uh, with, these, uh, with these newly designed fibers. And you can see the dramatic increase we've made even over our own sort of previous generation of, of fibers. And we've done that by tailoring the composition and core geometry to match the pump wavelength that we're using. And of course, you can also get these fibers uh, mashed with passives to have really, really low uh, losses to uh, optimize the efficiency of the laser that you're manufacturing. And then finally, uh, a new product in our semiconductor laser group is what we call our factor line of fiber coupled single emitter lasers. There we have a 3, 8, 16, and 22 emitter package uh, for, for different, uh, different power levels from these fiber coupled packages. All of them are available with 0.15 NA fiber output and 100, 200, or 400 micron delivery fibers, depending on the detail uh, of what you need. Some of the wavelengths that we've launched so far include 793 nanometers uh, with up to uh, 90 watts in our generation uh, two uh, product for those, uh, and that's intended for pumping thulium fiber lasers. Uh, we've also got a line of 888 or 88X nanometer uh, pump lasers in 200 and 400 microns with up to 150 watts of power with the number of emitters scaled as, uh, as the fiber diameter uh, changes, and that's for pumping uh, neodymium vanadate or neodymium YAG lasers at 885 uh, for a wide range of materials processing laser applications. And then finally, we've got the 976 nanometer line of products for, uh, for ytterbium uh, fiber laser pumping, and uh, especially uh, the very high power packages targeted at the uh, directed energy uh, defense uh, market where we can put up to 450 watts uh, or 400 watts of uh, VBG locked power into a 200 micron fiber uh, for those kinds of systems. And uh, in, in speaking of VBG locking, uh, we can maintain very high range of VBG locking over uh, a wide range of both currents and temperatures. This is an example of one of our 888 nanometer products where we keep uh, locking from 2 to 12 amps and from uh, 20 to 50 C uh, without needing to do any, uh, any fancy temperature changes. We can actually maintain that all uh, without having to uh, actively feed back into the system. You can kind of see an example of uh, the spectral locking profile here. So uh, with that, uh, I'd like to also invite you to come see uh, a lot more uh, technical detail information on a lot of our component products that we're presenting at Photonics West on the virtual uh, seminar in, in 2021. Uh, some papers on the high power wavelength stabilized lasers, as well as high power, high brightness tapered amplifiers at 1550 nanometers. Uh, some information on how we combat uh, thermal modal instability in our high power fibers. And then also some talks on the actual applications of our lasers, both in ultra fast materials processing, as well as uh, light engines for flow cytometry. So with that, I'll thank you for your attention. Uh, please come visit us at our virtual booth at Photonics West, or if you're uh, in China, come see us in person at Lasers China, or feel free to reach out to me directly. Uh, my contact information is here, and I'll make sure you're in touch with, uh, with our product experts in whatever uh, category that's interesting to you. So thanks again, and I'll uh, uh, throw it to Corinna, who has uh, all of your questions uh, listed, and be happy to answer anything you might have. Yes, thank you, Tim, and good morning, good afternoon. Um, also from my side, my name is Corinna. And I have collected all your questions in the background, but for, before we start with the Q&A session, I have one more organizational matter. At the end of this webinar, you will see a survey and we would appreciate if you give us your feedback on this webinar, but also maybe suggestions for other topics you are interested in. Your feedback is of course very important uh, for us to continue this webinar series with relevant content and interesting topics. Thank you. But now um, to your questions, and here's the first one for you, Tim. One of the attendees asked whether our new ultra-fast laser-optimized PM fibers are also useful for applications beside ultra-fast lasers. Yes, very much so. So uh, we design them with ultra fast lasers in mind, but they're really uh, actually applicable to really any kind of laser system where uh, nonlinearity is something you, you really need to suppress. So that might also mean that the fibers are useful for, for instance, narrow line width systems used in scientific applications for, for atom trapping or for uh, optical communications. 
Uh, it might also be that they're useful in even high peak power, high uh, uh, short pulse uh, nanosecond lasers for things like uh, for LIDAR transmitters. So yes, very much there. Targeted at ultra fast, but really broadly applicable. Okay, thank you. And here's the next one. Um, the types of lasers you produce include fiber, CO2, and also YAC? Uh, yes, that's, uh, that's right. We make a, a wide uh, range of different kinds of lasers. So not only the components for those lasers, but Coherent as a company also manufactures uh, CO2 lasers uh, for direct use in materials processing. Uh, we do make uh, some fiber lasers uh, and, uh, and a number of different neodymium and other uh, crystal-based uh, lasers in the nanosecond, uh, picosecond, femtosecond, and even CW range. So yes, that's right. Okay. And another interesting one, um, does the beam quality and power of tapered amplifiers depend on operation in CW versus pulse mode? Yeah, so the, the amplifiers uh, are, are mainly the beam quality of those amplifiers uh, can be driven by the, the type of operation regime you're, you're running in. So if you, uh, if you run them in CW, the, the thermal impact can eventually uh, degrade the beam quality. But if you start to modulate them, particularly at relatively low duty cycles, uh, running them in the, in the nanosecond or microsecond regime, that can uh, both allow you to drive the peak power of the device higher and also uh, maintain uh, the, the beam quality or even in some cases improve it. Uh, if you come to our Photonics West paper uh, on the 1550 product, I believe we, we talk, we're gonna talk a little bit about that. Uh, and then we'd love to, if you have uh, applications in mind, uh, uh, get much more in depth uh, with your specific uh, wavelength range to, to, to really uh, test that out. Okay, and then we have another one related to crystals. What is the largest size LBO crystal you can make? Do you have standard sizes? Yes, so, so for LBO, the, the largest size uh, we've made to date are, uh, I believe, uh, on the order of 90 uh, millimeter aperture size. Uh, and we fairly consistently make 80 millimeter aperture size crystals. We also uh, potentially are, are, are developing the capability to make even larger crystals. So if you have a larger crystal need in mind, please don't hesitate to, to reach out to us. We'd love to uh, take up that challenge. Uh, in terms of LBO crystals uh, that, that we might have on hand, uh, we do uh, make a really large number of LBO crystals, both for our internal consumption and for our external customers. So uh, definitely reach out to us. Chances are we may have something exactly what you need or really close um, to what you need on hand so that we can quickly uh, uh, turn out a crystal that you might need for prototyping. And that's uh, true across a, a number of different crystals, not just LBO. So uh, if you're interested in crystals and need something quickly for a prototype, definitely reach out to us. Okay, and then we have, thank you. Then we have a longer one. So, so one of our attendees has its background with Innotech and Bloomfield and um, based upon an initial relationship under Motorola. And the question is how important it is today to test and verify the laser cup technology. Um, he was also involved with Swiss Tech lasers for medical and aero components such as stents and specialized cutting, black monitoring. What are some of the new fields you see for the future such as plastics or other key medical device materials including dental and pulmonary lung components? Whew. Okay, sure. <laughs> I do see, uh, I, I do see a, a lot of new emerging uh, applications there. We're starting to see um, a wide range of different medical components besides the, the typical stents. But even within um, stent cutting, we're seeing a lot more nitinol, which starts to drive you towards ultra-fast lasers for processing those devices. Uh, in addition to the, the metallic components, there's also uh, a lot more uh, interest in uh, medical devices that are made out of a, a wide variety of different polymer materials, uh, uh, PMMA, uh, nylon, et cetera, that need to be very precisely drilled uh, with, uh, with, with lasers. Uh, so in the medical space, that's another place where uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of interest, particularly for UV and ultra-fast lasers. Uh, also in the medical space, uh, it's not just cutting, but also marking, uh, specifically black marking is an area that's really uh, becoming more and more popular as, uh, as people need to have traceability on all of these uh, medical devices. In the, in the 3D printing space, um, that's already a fairly uh, uh, widely growing space, but I, we are starting to see 
a lot more interest in consumer or, or higher volume, uh, lower performance kinds of machines that can make use of, for instance, direct diodes uh, for processing uh, and doing uh, direct uh, 3D printing and also some novel wavelengths. So perhaps you're doing 3D printing in a material that needs a specific wavelength to interact with it. There you can uh, tailor a semiconductor laser to, to generate a wavelength that's not easily achievable by a standard fiber laser, uh, for instance. So that's probably only the tip of the iceberg, but uh, that's what comes to mind at the moment. Okay, another one uh, related to, to stents, since when you have made fibers for stents? Uh, uh, I'm a little confused by that question, but I guess um, in, in terms of the uh, stent manufacturing, we certainly make components that can then be used to manufacture lasers used in, in, in stent uh, manufacturing. That might be uh, CW fiber lasers used in cutting the stents. It might be ultra fast lasers that are used to uh, cut the stents. And outside of the uh, realm of um, of uh, coherence components, we also, of course, can make full machine tools and tube cutters that are full systems that can take raw tube in and put stents out the other end. So we can really address that stent space, depending on what you're looking to do, anywhere from uh, the laser component level all the way up to the full machine tool level. Okay, thank you. Um, I think that's basically it. Um, if yeah, again, thank you for attending this webinar and I hand back to you, Tim. Great. Yeah, and uh, again, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, please, again, don't hesitate to, to reach out with any questions by email to me directly or come see us at our booths and we'd love to talk to you more about the, the details of what you're doing. So thanks again for your attention and have a, a great uh, rest of your day or evening.